Now, I've always said that there are seven things that a husband should learn to say to his wife if he wants to keep this good woman in his life for a good long time. They're not easy, but they're important. You were right, I was wrong. I'm sorry, and that won't happen again. How could I be so stupid? I don't deserve you, sweetheart. I would marry you all over again. No, you're much prettier than she is. And no, if anything, that dress makes your hips look too small. Hi, I'm Rex Havens. You might know me from my book and CD, Everything I Needed to Know I Learned from My Wife, which is about marriage and family. Turns out your work family and your real family have a lot in common, many shared lessons, and that's what we explore from a team building and communications angle in one big happy family. <laughs> now it turns out there are also seven things you should get used to saying at work. Make the workplace go more smoothly. I value your input. I want to work with you. We make a good team. I can learn from you. That's an interesting opinion. What do you think we should do? And my favorite, but I could be wrong. I value your input. These are the words that almost everybody is dying to hear. It's a very big world. And at times, all of us can feel very small. I value your input says that what you have to say, what you have to contribute is important to me. And studies show that if people hear that they are important to the organization, even as little as once a week, that is enough to sustain their dedication. But many unhappy employees report going weeks and even months without hearing about any feedback regarding their importance to the organization. Some people say that the only time they hear anything at all is at annual review. And obviously this can lead to feelings of not only insignificance, but in the extreme case, even a who cares attitude. I can learn from you. You know what I like about this one? Humility. It says there are still things for me to learn. I don't already know everything. I got a big kick at a conference once. I came to this section on humility and the guy in the front row goes, yeah, you can skip that stuff on humility. Ain't nobody around here afflicted with that. <laughs> One test I think of whether or not a person is truly an adult is when they start ending their sentences by saying, but I could be wrong. Young people almost never say, but I could be wrong because that possibility never enters their brain. In fact, I say that there are three stages of knowing things. And you can tell, I believe, what third of life a person is in by how they answer one question. What do you know? Ask a young man, 19 years old, what do you know? You get a cocky answer. What do you need? I'm the man with the plan and all the answers. This is your lucky day. Ask a middle-aged guy, what do you know? And he'll look at you blankly and go, well, not very much. Ask a 95-year-old man, what do you know? And he'll go, I don't know nothing. Never did know nothing, never will know nothing. Heck, I probably know less than nothing. I'd probably have to learn something just to get up to nothing. So I think mature adults eventually make peace with their fallibility and they start ending their sentences with, but I could be wrong. Or in the alternative, they begin their sentences with, I could be mistaken, but. I say, double cover yourself. I could be mistaken, but I believe these are the facts, but I could be wrong. The bottom line is, but I could be wrong, costs you nothing, plus you get humility points. The person who says, but I could be wrong and isn't wrong is better off than those who don't say it and blunder. I think of it as premium free idiot insurance. It's always there on the shelf. It costs you nothing to play the card and it can only make you look better. What's not to love?
I was at a conference once and I heard a conversation that every manager in America should hear. A young woman asked another young woman, how do you like your new job? And she looked at her with the biggest smile on her face and she said, I love it, it's great. They actually know my name and they say please and thank you, it's heaven. I think every manager in America should hear that. The only, the biggest difference for this young woman between her old job and her new job is they actually know my name and they say please and thank you. Now I know some people think, well that's, that's a minimum of civility, that should exist everywhere. Tragically, it's not a universal experience. So there it is, one big happy family. We'll laugh, we'll cry. Okay, we won't cry, I mean this in the notebook or steel magnolias, but we'll laugh at ourselves and our families because family life, let's face it, is seriously funny. We'll talk about our work lives and our home lives, and I'll show you how the same techniques you've used all your life at home to communicate effectively and manage change not only can be used at work, but can be fabulously effective.